I always say that discipline is the root of all good qualities. But you, you have to absolutely apply it to things outside of just waking up early. It's, it's everything. It's working out every day, making yourself stronger and faster and more flexible and healthier. Discipline is eating the right foods to fuel your system. It, it's about disciplining your emotions so you can make good decisions. It's about having the discipline to control your ego so your ego doesn't get out of hand and control you. It's about treating people the way you would want to be treated and, and doing the tasks that you don't necessarily want to do but that you know will help you or help your team. It's about facing your fears. It takes discipline to face your fears so you can conquer them. And that's what discipline is. Discipline means taking the hard road, the uphill road to do what's right for yourself and for other people. It's so often the easy path, the easy path that calls to us to be weak for that moment, to break down for that moment, to give in to the desire and the short-term gratification. But the discipline will not allow that. The discipline calls for strength and fortitude and will. It won't accept weakness. It won't tolerate another breakdown. The discipline can seem like it's your worst enemy. But the reality is, discipline is your best friend. It will take care of you like nothing else can. And it'll put you on that path the path to strength and health and intelligence and happiness. And most importantly, it'll put you on that path to freedom. People want to know how to stop the laziness and they want to know how to stop the procrastination. And, you know, they have some idea in their head, you know, some kind of a, a vision of what they want to do. But they don't know where to start. They don't know where to start it, you know? They don't know where to start. And so they say, hey, wh where do I start? And, and when's the best time to start? And I have a very simple answer for that. Here and now. That's it. You, you want to improve? You want to get better? You want to get on a workout program or a clean diet? You want to start a business? You want to write a book or make a movie or build a house or a computer or put together some mobile application? Where do you start? You start right here. And when do you start? You start right now. You initiate the action aggressively. You go. Because the idea isn't going to execute itself. And, and the book isn't going to write itself. And the, the weights out in the gym, they're not going to move themselves. You have to do it. And you have to do it now. And that means... You gotta stop thinking about it and stop dreaming about it and stop researching every aspect of it and reading all about it and debating the pros and cons of it. Just start doing it. Take that first step and make it happen. Get after it.
and get after it here and now. A person's strengths are often their biggest weaknesses. And so that also means that their weaknesses can be their strengths. So, me, I am weak. In all those ways that I listed, I am weak. But I don't accept that. I don't accept that I am what I am and that that is what I'm doomed to be. No, I don't accept that. I'm fighting. I'm always fighting, I'm struggling, and I'm scrapping, and I'm kicking and clawing at those weaknesses to change them, to stop them. Some days I win. Some days I don't. But each and every day, I get back up, and I move forward with my fist clenched toward the battle, toward the struggle. And I fight with everything I've got to overcome those weaknesses and those shortfalls and those flaws. As I strive to be just a little bit better today than I was yesterday. First of all, before the war, uh, the military sent me to college. So I had to go to college. And I, as I said early, or as I've said before, I was super focused when I went to college. I'd been in the SEAL teams for 10 years. I was a go-getter, I was a hard charger. I was like, oh, you want me to read this book? Boom, I would sit down and just force myself to read it. And then got back to the SEAL teams. And like, like when I went to college, I literally read every single thing that I was assigned. And nobody does that in college. Nobody does that. I read every single page of every single thing I was assigned during college. That's ridiculous. It's almost a waste of time. It's almost embarrassing. Echo definitely thinks it's a waste of time. But, but it was because I just could just gr lock my brain right. down and get it done. Yeah. So then get back to the teams and in the teams, officer in the teams, you have a lot of administrative paperwork right. to do evaluations and after actions reports and all these things and I would do the same thing I just go into lockdown mode and I put my brain on it and boom I'd go through it and just get it done I would just be able to focus so like each thing laser focus so laser focus that report done gone like, memo okay, give me that. Oh, that gone. gone report done. done there's another kind of instinct that you need to be on the lookout for and this one is a liar this one is is a saboteur. Well, this one is a backbiter. And like the devil himself, he's a shapeshifter. He's going to disguise himself and make you think he's got your best interest in mind. But he doesn't. This is the instinct that says you've had enough. This is the instinct that says you've 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 given it your best shot. You can you can stand down. You can back off. You can take a knee. This is the instinct that says you can rest now. Do not listen to that instinct. Do not listen. That instinct is a liar and wants to bring you down. That's the instinct that's a defense mechanism. It wants to give you an out, a place to run to, a little, a little place of sympathy, an amnesty, a little place of amnesty where everything is forgiven, where all these these failures can gather together in comfort and drown their sorrows in lies and in deception. And they tell each other. And they'll tell you, you did the best you could. 
No, they'll say the deck, the deck, the deck was stacked against you. And they'll say it's not your fault. And they'll tell you it's okay to stop. It's okay to settle. It's okay to give up. And that is the instinct you need to fight. You need to push back, to smash into the ground. Do not take the easy way out. Do not give up based on instinct. If you are forced to stand down, to retreat, so that you can rebuild and re-attack, so be it. But make that decision based on logic, not on the instinct of surrender and defeat. And you need to train that instinct, your instinct. Train it to say, get up, go, fight on. And if that is what you become, if that becomes your fundamental reaction to adversity, if that becomes your gut instinct, then you will overcome just about anything that stands in your path. Thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of warriors that have been in very stressful situations and faced evil and faced death much worse than the situation I'm in or you're in that we might consider stressful. And I even did this when I was overseas, when I was on deployment, when I was a combat leader. I was feeling stress and you know what? We took casualties and it was awful and it was heartbreaking and but there were other soldiers and warriors throughout time that had been in much worse situations. Gettysburg or Vicksburg or the Battle of the Bulge and, and all those horrible situations they prove really that humans can withstand almost almost unimaginable stress which meant to me that i could too and you can and, and the first step for me is doing that taking that look to gain some perspective and then in order to gain perspective, you've got to do something that we already talked about. You've got to detach. You've got to detach from the problems or the stress that you're experiencing so that you can get that perspective of them. Now, there's a couple different types of stress. Now, if it's something that you can control that's causing you stress, well, why aren't you getting control of it? Now, there's also stress that's caused by things that you cannot control. And if you remember talking earlier about artillery and how horrible that was and what made it so horrible was that there's no control over. So if you can't control something and you can't get control of it, you have to at least Embrace what you can. And I'm not saying you're going to embrace artillery shelling, but I'll tell you what, when it comes to things like artillery, or for us in Ramadi, it was IEDs. And we could do everything we could do to mitigate that risk, but eventually there's only so much you can do and you cannot completely eliminate it. But you can't control it, so why are you going to worry about it? Why are you going to stress about it? If there's something that's completely beyond your control, 
You cannot, you've got to detach from it and not let yourself get stressed about it. And on top of that, if it's something that you can't control, how can you look at it in a different light? How can you see it in a way that you could actually take advantage of it? How can you take that stress and make it into some kind of ally? You know, the, the chaos of combat is something that I couldn't control, but I had to embrace it so I could try and figure out how to take advantage of it. So when it comes to stress, don't fight it. Turn it on itself and use it. Use it. Use it to make yourself sharper and more alert. And use it to make yourself think more and learn more and get better. And use that stress as a catalyst to make yourself better. When you say, oh, you know what? I'm not going to finish this book right now. It's, it, I don't really want to. It's sort of like when you say, oh, I'm not going to quit. No, it's Oxycontin. not that I don't want to, though. That's what I'm saying. You say, but I don't want to do it right now. I can push it off a little bit. You accept that. You accept that answer. Mm. You accept that answer. The soldier, Jody, right. wouldn't accept that answer. Would not. Do you self-talk? Not really. Not really. I'm not a guy that says, you know, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. I just do it. Right. I just go and do whatever that thing is. I actually took this question from Twitter and I answered the question in one word. You've lived a life dominated by doubt and fear. How do you step into bravery? That, that's how you step into bravery. Step. Take the step. Step aggressively towards your fear. And that, that step towards your fear is the step into bravery. Because we, we're, we're scared of what we don't know. And there is only one way to learn and to know and that is to confront that fear you have to step you have to go and this simple action this simple attitude it answers so many questions my theory here would be if you're afraid of fighting and altercations go train jiu-jitsu if you're afraid of heights work on some rock climbing climbing if you're afraid of the water it's time to swim it's time to surf it's time to get out there if you're afraid of pull-ups if if you're afraid of pull-ups do pull-ups if you're in squats do squats if you're afraid of public speaking go speak in public mm -hmm. if you're afraid to start a business start a business make it small and on all these what you have to do is you have to mitigate the risk and you have to ease yourself into it but you got to go for it and eventually you will overcome that fear mm -hmm. but the hard part is you got to take that first step yeah. you got to take that first step to begin to inoculate yourself against the fear against the fear of the thing mm -hmm. that's in your mind because that fear generally is in your mind yeah that, you know when you get up on stage to do a public speaking People are not going to throw tomatoes at you and say, oh my, you're an idiot, get off the stage. No, right. they're, they, they're going to sit there, you know? So yeah. there's nothing to fear. Yeah. It's in, it's in your head. Nobody likes being evaluated, right? Nobody. Mm -hmm. Now, you might get somebody that says, oh, I love being coached. And, and there are some people that are pretty positive about that. And as a matter of fact, I have clients where they want to be coached, right? Mm -hmm. But most people, especially in a normal environment, like if you go out and you hire someone to coach you, okay. But most people in a normal environment, they don't like being evaluated. They don't like being judged. Yeah, yeah. Always judging. Yeah. So... 
the first thing you have to do when it comes to being evaluated is get that in your head that you, like everybody else, has defense mechanisms. Yep. And they're going to flare up as soon as somebody says something critical of you. As soon as somebody goes to evaluate you, your defense mechanisms are going to go up. And then once that happens, once you feel those defense mechanisms go up, you got to put your ego in check. Mm-hmm. You got to put your ego in check. And then once you do that, you got to listen. Listen. I know it sounds crazy. Listen to what they're saying. Don't even, don't even think of a response. Mm-hmm. Say to yourself, you know what? I'm not even going to respond. I'm only going to listen to what they're saying. Yeah, but and and to kind of add you, to you're that, already, you already can't even take it. No, no, I can take it. Oh, okay, I'm saying, ahead. but I think because um, people will will quote unquote do that, but they won't really do it. As far as just, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to listen. Yeah, they're, that, that's oh, actually like that's actually like it. That's actually how they set it up. To look, I'm not even going to say anything. Exactly. I'm just going to listen. Yes, yeah, exactly what I'm talking about. It's yeah. like, you know, I'll, you know I'm, or they'll or, all body language. You know, yeah. the kind where they're like. You know, they'll do that kind of yeah. stuff. It, it, don't do that. Well, don't do that. So, so you're right. You got to listen and not just listen, but truly listen. Not listen just with your ears, but listen with your mind and your yeah. brain and with an open mind, mm. an open mind. And then think about what people are saying and then see it. Mm. It's important. See it from their perspective. Mm-hmm. Because if you just see it from your perspective, you're not even seeing what the criticism really is. You're only seeing the defense of the criticism. So actually get in their mind and say, wow, what does this look like from their perspective? Why would they be taking the effort and the risk and the challenge of trying to present this problem to me if it wasn't important? Mm -hmm. Are they just doing it just to make me mad? No, they're trying to help you. And you know what? Just like, just like a joke, you know, they say like every joke has some little truth to it every little criticism even if the person is your arch rival their criticism is built on something Something, so what is that reality that you can take away from it even though you got to take it with a grain of salt especially if the person like it says here if the person has different opinions and motives well of course they have different opinions you want people with different opinions Mm -hmm. maybe they have different motives so maybe you think they're trying to usurp your authority or something like that so you maybe you got to take it with a grain of salt but find the grain of truth in there too and find what it is from their perspective what the problem is and learn from it Mm. and one of the most beautiful things about this is you take the criticism and you make adjustments you know how do I deal with being evaluated I try and accept the evaluation and make adjustments to improve myself as a human Mm. that's how I deal with being evaluated and I'm not saying I deal with anybody better than anybody else because everybody gets defensive myself included Mm. You know, we had a little conversation when we started tonight, right? Sure. You said I repeated some stuff on the last podcast. Allegedly. And, you know, and then we talked through it. And then I said, you know, and you know, I noticed that your camera work was a little bit off. And, you, you know, it was just, the, my point was just to prove how defensive we all get. And, yeah. We all get. And you know what I did? I said, you know what? I noticed that too. You know, as far as me repeating, there was a couple little sections, and it was because we pull, I pulled from multiple different books, and they had a little bit of overlap. Yep, same thing, yeah. And looking back on it, probably shouldn't have, but at the time, I thought, you know what, this is emphasizing really important points. Yeah. But still, people don't want to hear the same thing over and over again, so I probably shouldn't have done that. So guess what? Criticism accepted. I will adapt, adjust, and I will make improvements to my game based on your criticism of my technique, my skill, and my life.